Hi, my name is Justin, and today we're going to teach you how to take this ordinary kid's toy and turn it into the same material used to make your motorcycle plastics. So your supplies list is basic Legos made of the ABS plastic, same of any skins for any motorcycle. Two, two uh, pliers, needle nose, or channel locks, whatever you want to use to break up the Legos. A cheap glass jar, doesn't matter, mason jar works, whatever you, you don't want it to be able to uh, react to the acetone. Anything made out of certain plastics may melt with the acetone, so you want something inert like Glass is a good example. I bought a really cheap paintbrush. This is the cheapest of the cheap because you're just going to apply it and then throw it away. It's pretty much useless. Any kind of acetone will work. Um, I wouldn't go with mineral spirits or lacquer thinner because those are based for wood based products. This is strictly plastic. And then a good kind of sealer tape. Um, I, this is particularly frog tape because it holds in. Bondo body work very easily and stays true to the form very easily. So the first step is taking the glass jar. Obviously we've already made a mix so we're going to make another mix for you. Um, we're going to break apart the Lego, the Duplo actually. Uh, regular Legos you probably don't need to break as much, but I mean, who really needs a, a, a Duplo, right? I mean, if you're beyond six, come on, take about it. Anyways, break it into small pieces, as small as you can get them. Yeah. They don't always cooperate, but you're going to need some strength in this. This is a good sized chunk, right here. And we're going to keep breaking it up and uh, show you what to do after. Doesn't always cooperate. Something like that size is perfect. Okay, the, these are about the size pieces you're looking to get to. And you just dump it into the bottom. Try to make an even coat in the bottom. Give it a good whack if you don't, it's not cooperating. Then you open your acetone and you put a layer about the depth of what the subject you're going to, or the pieces. You might need to move it around a little bit. Don't try to agitate it too much because it'll form bubbles inside it. I'm going to obviously have to paint it back, push it back with a paintbrush but that's about the depth that you're looking to get. Then it's a waiting game. So this is the consistency we're looking for. It's more like a creamy peanut butter. It takes about a couple hours to get there. Um, and once it's ready, you're gonna put it on this. It, uh, you want the, the, the product to be level so it doesn't drip very far. And you're probably gonna have to do a several coats on it. It's not, it's not gonna happen in one, one going. And you just kinda dab it and you try to make it as level as possible, but sanding will take anything away after a little time. Try to make it in a well-ventilated area. Actually, in fact, do it in a well-ventilated area because this is toxic and your acetone is escaping from the product. So we have to wait for this mixer to, to, to completely dry and let the acetone completely escape. It's probably going to take overnight. Then we get to the sanding process. Okay, with all the body filled in with, with uh, the composite of kids' toys, um, now we, we, we take it down with sandpaper. I wouldn't say anything higher than 100 grit, and if you use a variable speed sander, nothing too intense over first three settings. Um, it tends to come out in chunks, and then any leftover bits you fill in with Bondo or any other kind of body filler. Then after that we applied some primer and a little bit of gloss because I'm doing a custom paint. But as you can see, it's just as strong as the original piece, just using the kid's toy.